What's the difference between having a really great idea and having an invention that you can patent? I'm going to discuss that on this video. Hi, my name is John Farrell. I'm a Silicon Valley patent attorney. Welcome back to my channel. Now, when you think about it, all inventions are ideas, but not all ideas are inventions. For example, I think I'm going to have fried chicken for dinner tonight. Well, that's a great idea, but it's not really an invention. And then one of my favorites, adding handlebar streamers to my bicycle. Well, this could be patentable if my handlebar streamers are new, useful, and non-obvious, as we'll see. All inventions are special. We need to keep having inventions to keep advancing technology. But in order for an invention to be patentable, it doesn't need to be so crazy special. It just needs to meet the basic requirements of patentability. It needs to be new, it needs to be useful, and it needs to be non-obvious. Now, a lot of inventors worry that their invention just isn't enough, that they haven't created something special enough to rise to the level of patentability, enough to get a patent. And it's important to understand that patents are not Nobel Prizes. They're protections that are granted by the government. It's a form of monopoly that's granted by the government in exchange for you taking the time to write down your invention and submit it to the patent office and to share your invention with the world for future use. In exchange for taking the time to write down your invention and to record it in the patent office, the patent office provides you with a limited monopoly to exclude others from making, using, or selling your invention for a period of 20 years from the date of filing of your application. So you see, the patent office is not granting special prizes for crazy, earth-shattering inventions. Instead, they merely want you to take the time to record your invention so that other people can make use of your invention in future generations. And it's also important to understand that most inventions are really improvements on prior inventions. For example, a roller skate. Well, a roller skate consists of a shoe and some wheels and a skate key. And all three of those have been invented before, but if you put that combination together, you get something completely different. And this is really what most inventions are. They're a combination of well-known parts that provide some utility that wasn't previously known. So as I've said, the requirements for patentability are that it must be new, useful, and non-obvious. Let's first take a look at new. New merely means that your invention has not been in the public for more than one year before the filing of your patent application. We want to record new inventions. The second requirement is usefulness. The invention needs to be useful. It needs to do something useful. And this useful requirement is a pretty low threshold to meet. Most inventions, most ideas are useful. And the third test is obviousness. Now this is a little bit tougher test for us to understand and apply. And the question here is, whether someone of ordinary skill in the art of the invention that you've come up with, would they have known about or been able to practice your invention without your patent recordation? In other words, is it just a waste of space to write down the invention and record it in the patent office because it would just be well known or too easily understood already by others? So these are the basic requirements for patents. Patents cover machines, processes, and formulations that are new, useful, and non-obvious. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples to exercise these requirements. Now I love chocolate chip cookies, and what if I come up with a new recipe for chocolate chip cookies where I crunch up Kellogg's Frosted Flakes and put them on top of the chocolate chip cookies and bake them in. This new recipe provides chocolate chip cookies that are really crunchy and extra sweet. Would this be an invention? Well, probably not. The reason these chocolate chip frosted flake cookies wouldn't be an invention is that it's pretty obvious that if we take chocolate chip cookies and put frosted flakes on top, the cookies are going to be extra crunchy and extra sweet. 
the combination is obvious. It's anticipated what the result is going to be of this combination of cereal topping and cookies. Well, probably this is really a delicious idea. This recipe is probably not patentable. Now, second example, I decide to take conventional handlebar streamers and put them on my mountain bike handlebar grips. Is this patentable? Well, probably not because conventional handlebar streamers are designed to be put on handlebar grips for decoration and to pimp my mountain bike. Although this combination of handlebar streamers and my mountain bike hand grips might look really good, this probably doesn't rise to the level of invention. The, co the combination itself is just too obvious. Now let's say I've invented a new mousetrap. Would this mousetrap be patentable? Well, mouse traps are really well known, but if my mouse trap operates in a more efficient way or it's cheaper to manufacture, or it's just a better mouse trap, it's possible that my mouse trap could be patentable. For example, let's say I've just taken a conventional wooden mouse trap and I made some tweaks to it. I've made it operate a little more efficiently, a little lighter and a little less costly to manufacture. That could be patentable if my invention is new, useful, and non-obvious. I can take an old design, I can make changes to it. If my improvements make the original better and my improvements are new, useful, and non-obvious, then I can get a patent on these improvements. The improvements don't have to be huge improvements. They just have to meet the minimum requirements of new, useful, and non-obvious. Now, what if I take a traditional wooden mouse trap and I make it out of metal? The reason for this being that I want my mouse trap to be durable, to be reusable, to last a long time. So I change the materials from wood to metal. Well, this improvement really doesn't rise to the level of invention because the mouse trap operates in the same way. It looks the same, it functions in the same way. The only real difference is I've changed the materials of construction in order to make it more durable. And in this case, it would be obvious that if I made a mouse trap out of metal rather than wood, it would last longer and be more durable and reusable. Merely changing materials in most cases is not an invention. Now the takeaway here is that ideas can be inventions, but for them to rise to the level of inventiveness, they must be new useful and non-obvious. It doesn't have to be a crazy amount of invention. It just has to meet the minimum requirements. If you have thoughts or questions about inventiveness, leave them in the comments section. We'd love to read about them. And of course, if you'd like to speak to a patent attorney, send me a message at the email address below. I'll see you in the next video.